If you stick around here and I don't do nothing else, you're going to get an 80s reference, okay? Hey, yo, hey, yo, hey, yo. Welcome to my channel. Hey, yo, hey, yo. Listen up. Listen up. Everybody wanna be black, but don't nobody wanna be a nigga. Uh. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. I am your girl, Debbie and Nikki, the original wireless woman, welcoming you back to our spot, room 303. If you are new, welcome to the crew, but my returnees. You know what we do. If you like this video, well then like this video. Let the comments reveal how you really feel. And if you're feeling a vibe, well go ahead on and subscribe. But before you blink, share this link. Welcome Wi-Fi's to another Cult of Personality episode of The Wireless Woman. We're going to be talking about the black ops today and even though i do have another black ops video that kind of ties into this this is a little bit different of a take on it so we're going to get into the pathology that really lies behind people who oppose you for seemingly no good reason at all but before we get into that content, you already know what time it is. What are we gonna do tomorrow night? The same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. It is time to call the roll. So I need all of my unplugged, unbothered, unleashed Wi-Fi's to the front of the class. It is time for us to read aloud. Shit, you in charge of the girls, right? I am in charge of the girls. Are you in charge of the girls? I am in charge of the girls. Okay. All right, Wi-Fi's. Welcome. Welcome to another episode of The Wireless Woman. And this is a cult of personality episode. We will be talking about the black ops. But do me a favor on your way in and like this video. Why? Because when you like it, well, I love it also make sure that you subscribe to this channel and leave me some comments that fire headphones emoji and go ahead and share this content all right so you know that the cult of personality series is very near and dear to my heart it's a place where i come to have my own little therapeutic session and kind of unpack some of the experiences that I had during the time of being in narcissistic relationships. Like I'm saying, we're always seeing this aspect of our society continue to grow with the advent and the acceleration of social media. You can put someone in front of a camera just about anywhere and that person is able to magnify themselves their image and their voice and we're starting to see what some people are really actually made of now here's the thing any one of us can be corrupted that's the honest to goodness truth i mean adam and eve were the perfect man and woman and they were corrupted you know so any fallen human being is going to be subject to being able to be compromised. This episode with the Black Ops, I'm going to be talking about the microchasm of what goes on in a narcissistic relationship, but I also hope to apply it to the greater population of the Black community so that we can begin to actually see that this has social ramifications of us not really checking the bullies that are in our personal lives. You know, some of us, are in very close proximity to very narcissistic people. And we don't call them into account for how the little ways that they sabotage their personal relationships point to a much larger societal problem. I went with my aunt to go see Hamilton.
You guys, it was so awesome. And even though I do feel like Hamilton does a lot of cultural appropriation, it's a damn good musical. But in that particular um, musical, you see the Jesus Judas dynamic of Aaron Burr and Alexander Hamilton. And you see in this musical that Aaron Burr actually has all of the gifts and talents and abilities that Alexander Hamilton has, but he doesn't have the same courage. He doesn't have the same integrity and it causes him to covet those characteristics in Alexander Hamilton. And even though he has temperance and he has statesmanship, he has a lot of other qualities that make him different from Alexander Hamilton, not necessarily better, but his goal and desire to best him and be better than him becomes this undoing force. And we just see that dynamic in so many elements of society where something great could have been accomplished, but it was undone by the ego and the hubris of really one person versus the establishment. And I'm all for power to the people. People. I'm all for people being individually empowered to take on large systems. However, we have to also be looking at the character of these elevated people and narcissists have become puffed up, elevated within their own heart, in their own psyche, in their own consciousness in a way that takes them outside of reality and allows them to be not constructive, but destructive to systems. Most of these people have ruined relationships, families, organizations long before they showed up at your door, but nobody ever checked them for whatever reason. It can be particularly difficult with vulnerable or covert narcissists because they seem so fragile that a lot of times people don't notice how destructive their ego is in the situation that they're posturing and positioning themselves to be damsels so that you never really take on the fact that they're completely unaccountable for their actions. When it comes to narcissists, you have to understand their goal is to oppose you. It's something that they call oppositional defiance. And you see it a lot with teenagers. And that is the age range that most narcissists are stunted in they have something called arrested development where they never they never made that transition from teenager to adult so all of that teenage angst that you deal with in an adolescent you'll be dealing with that in an adult person who never really ages past that with a narcissist you're going to deal with a lot of aversion to authority and a lot of opposition and defiance with them. That's just what it is. Their goal isn't even to be right. They're willing to be wrong as long as it opposes you. And with a lot of the cluster B personality types, you're going to see a whole lot of overlapping with other personality disorders. So there's a lot of antisocial personality that goes on with your run-of-the-mill narcissist. And with antisocial personalities, they don't tend to feel like rules apply to them. And you'll hear narcissists make those same type of exceptions a lot of the time. Like, well, not in my case, I'm different. You know, I'm special. You know, that, that doesn't apply to me because here's my circumstance or my situation. And I think our society really lends itself towards empowering the individual above the collective, which in some ways, like I said, it's been good because it allows us to be able to become a much more conscientious society. We have become more validating of people's individual experiences. And of course, that's good. However, when a person's individual experience excludes them and excuses them from the rules that everyone else has to play by, then that's where you get a very blurry gray area. A lot of times with narcissists, you'll find that they're very difficult to compromise with or to work in cooperation with because their goal is opposition. 
you know, that's the thing that makes them feel special, makes them feel set apart is to see a whole group of people working in unison and in concert and in cooperation with each other. And to be able to be that one person who says, well, I'm not too, I'm not so sure that's such a good idea. You know, I, I could have done that, but I wouldn't have done it that way. Just that exception, just that exceptionalness from them is their way of exerting their individualness, but they don't think about how it affects the entire whole. Most people who are in relationships want to define their goals. They want to have a defined path forward, but you're going to find it's very difficult to get that type of cooperation from a narcissist. This is something that we've seen inside of large black institutions and organizations and corporations because we as a people have been taught that that type of divisiveness lends to greatness. That's what capitalism is. If I can get all of you to do something that I myself don't want to do, then that makes me master and ruler over you. You know, I will take all the money for myself and then divide out to you what I feel like is a fair day's wage for the work you did in exchange for my leadership. So we're seeing this come up more and more and more in the black community, especially where misogynoir has seeped its way into our community, where you have this dynamic coming up between black men and women that's creating, you know, feminism and, you know, the manosphere and all these different aspects of people who really just want the power to subdue the other person. And no one's really thinking about the cooperative and how we actually make a way forward to work together. You know, that's that crazy making behavior that pulls you apart and just spins you. It spins you right round, baby, right round, like a record, baby, right round, round, round. You spin me right round, baby, right round, like a record, baby, right round. If I don't do nothing else, I'm going to make an 80s reference, okay? If you stick around here and I don't do nothing else, you're going to get an 80s reference, okay? But that's that behavior that makes you feel so off balanced in a narcissistic relationship with a narcissist because every time you set a goal, like thinking to yourself, this person wants to preserve the relationship with me. Clearly that makes sense. They want to preserve this relationship with me. So what can I do to make that easier? You know, maybe if I do this. Maybe if I go ahead and do that, maybe if I, you know, well, next time I won't say anything and then it'll, and that appeasement that you go through because this person has you convinced that they want this relationship with you, but only on certain terms and that those terms will make the relationship better. Every time you acquiesce to that, every time they get you to move to that, the goal line just keeps moving. Because the goal was never to get you to change your behavior so that you guys could get along and have a better relationship. The goal is control. The goal is opposition. You know, the goal is to keep a wedge driven between the two of you. And I know what you're thinking because I think that if you are an emotionally healthy person, none of this makes sense. But... If you are a parent to a teenager, all of that just made sense. It's like we live under this roof in the same home. I provide the things that you need. Why do you hate me? You know, and it's a breakdown of the the logic that goes into adulthood. When you separate yourself from that need to assert your identity in your youth. I was a teenager in the 90s. You had that group of kids that were what we called the school shooters. I know you can't say that on YouTube, but I can. Um, and you know, you knew them when you saw them. They were the goth kids. They had the trench coats with the oversized black jeans. They would have the chain that would be hanging and like a lip ring or what you knew. They were a group of people that wanted to stand out from everybody else, but they also wanted to collect together with each other in the camaraderie of being strange and unusual. 
y'all want to be outcasts together. Like, how weird is that? You know, kind of the point of being an outcast is not having friends. But anyway, my point is that's what you're dealing with in the personality of a narcissist. You're dealing with someone who wants to belong, but they want to belong on their own terms. Yeah, it's never going to fully make sense. But I do hope that by pulling that sheet back and at least being able to look at it for what it is and, and examine it, we can start to decode it. Like I said, we're never going to fully understand it. If you could understand it, you yourself might be a psychopath. So the goal is not necessarily to understand it in a way where we can empathize with these people, but in a way where we can begin to root some of these people that are going to be uncooperative in the building of this new nation out and be able to begin to create defense systems that will allow us not to be running all around that mulberry bush with people who only just want to keep us occupied. You have to remember, these are the Alexa, the Siri of society. Their only job is to keep you engaged, to keep you busy. Back in the 80s, when they first started creating home gaming consoles, before that, you'd have to go out to like an arcade or something like that. You know, they would call it the babysitter. You know, for the first time, parents had like some free time because your kids didn't have to go to a basketball game or this or that. You could just sit them in front of a game that would simulate and stimulate them. But it, it, it didn't really require that same level of engagement. And that's literally what you're on. The same social media apps, the same video games, the same four, five, six, seven, eight hour basketball games. Like I get so, I get so frustrated with guys that say they don't have time to do things, but then we'll sit on a Saturday for four hours and watch a whole game, like, like a whole four hour football game and not even move. I just, I find that wild. I really do. But my point in what I'm saying is that same level of engagement where everything else you were supposed to do that day, like you're engrossed in this. I can tell you, honestly, it happens to me all the time where I will get up early to get to work and then mess around and start arguing in some comments with somebody and end up running late. Like where did 30 minutes of my life go? And then you get in this argument with this person just for them to type back after they have frustrated your life. Oh, you mad. Or, okay. Like, you could have just saved all that time. <laughs> you could have just unplugged, <laughs> been unbothered, and unleashed yourself to do something else, to do something great and impactful. You could have done some yoga. You could have done anything. And that's why we have to begin to understand what the pathology of these people are so that we can dis engage so that we can unplug because as always i am your girl debbie and nikki your neighborhood wireless woman if you are ready to join the unplugged revolution with me go ahead and drop that fire headphones emoji in the comments and you know i want to hear from you tell me about how these energy vampires Okay, these vibration suckers have been, you know, in your life pulling on you as the source of their enjoyment. You know, they literally are just playing you like a joystick. And I hope that you can see that. And I hope that this comment section can become a place where you can really share your experience and find people who have experienced those same things and can come along and encourage you and support you. I know if nothing else, I will encourage you and support you and engage with you in those comments. I'll be there. I'll be there. Just look over your shoulders, honey. Ooh, I'll be there. But until the next episode, class is now dismissed. Thank you for sticking around until the very end of this episode. You have been a friend till the end. And not in that weird checky way. But if you like this content, you might want to check out this episode right here.
here. And if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to my channel by clicking this link here. Until the next time, be unplugged, unbothered, and unleashed. You're not niggas.